Hey everybody. I've got a futuristic racing game from the GameCube. <gasps> Is this F-Zero? Oh my god, am I playing F-Zero GX? Am I playing a good game for the summer of no games with your host, James Jones? This might be F-Zero. We might have a good game. What is it? What is it? What? What is it? Oh no! It's Tube Slider! It's Tube Slider! How did we get here? Hey everybody, it's James Jones. Bringing you another video of the Radio Free Nintendo New Business Preview Show. This is Tube Slider. Produced by partially owned Nintendo subsidiary ND Cube shortly before the release of the game of GameCube classic F Zero GX. Originally published by NEC, maker of home electronics, this was their triumphant return to the video game publishing market after they had actually left it a couple years earlier. And we've got Tube Slider. So I've already been playing this game. In fact, this is my second attempt at recording this video. The first video I recorded got eaten. So this is my fourth time playing this game if you count my two preview plays so I don't understand what I'm doing. So you owe me. You'll see why in a minute. Game's only got four modes. Versus, time attack, records, Grand Prix. There's also some training. You can do laps on the track, the free run and course practice, or you can do this awesome tutorial. Let me show you this great tutorial with this awesome compressed GameCube video. The sub barrier system. I'm not going to describe it. I'll let you read it. Look at that video compression. This is how the game teaches you to play it. I did not get a manual with this game, so this is all I've got. Alright, that's enough of that. So let's go into compete mode. We're gonna do Grand Prix. So one thing about this game that's really baffling is the difficulty jump. Not between normal and maximum, which I haven't unlocked maximum yet. Between these Grand Prix. So the Kagosha is a three session, the Asogi is a five, and then a Yuda is a seven. So Let's do Kagusha. I'm probably only going to show one race at the Kagusha because it's... I'm only going to show one race at the Kagusha because it's really, really, really easy. You'll see what I mean in a second. I could change the music. They're all the same kind of generic stuff. I'm going to go with Turbo. So Turbo is a constantly charging thing that as long as I have more than over the line... You can see the little gauge at the bottom. As long as I have more than that little green line, I can activate it by pressing B. The thing about Turbo is that it can be stolen. So if you see these little things showing up, which you won't because I'm not actually going to run into anybody, is that we can steal power from each other to fill that thing up, or we can just get it through, you know, just time on track. You can see it's filling up pretty well. You can also look at the maps on the side to see that I'm already... Strongly at risk of never seeing another opponent in this race ever again. Um, you can see I've got these little boosters on the side of my craft to kind of push me up and down the wall. If you haven't figured out what the gimmick of this game is, you're in a tube. So you can't track out because you're, on, you're constantly in a tube and there's nowhere to go. There's still advantages towards staying towards the bottom or trying to control your position on the track because if you're doing a round... There are certain parts of the track where you seem to go faster, like this area I'm on right now. But if you're going around the tube, you're not moving in a straight line, so you're not maximizing your velocity, your forward velocity. Also, if you saw that indicator, I'm 13 and a half seconds ahead of my next opponent. Already. Kaga shot is way too easy. You don't learn anything. Uh, so I, I beat this gold on average 20 second lead in every race and didn't use the side boost at all and let's just say the next the next set of races makes this look like a joke so th there's a good part here is that I'm actually getting to practice 
My goal, and I've never accomplished it yet, is to lap. I want to lap somebody. But I'm not counting on it. So we'll get through this race, and then we'll jump to the other. I'll complete it just from... I'll complete the, the, the Grand Prix and show you how much of a joke it is. But I'll actually cut the video ahead to, to when I win. So the tricky part about the boost is you actually press the shoulder button opposite the side you want the jet to come out on. So to make that one pop out of my right side, I pressed the left shoulder button. And that took a lot of getting used to. Uh, I was screwing it up a lot. But you're also pressing the stick to the right, so you kind of have to keep in your head that they're opposite, and it's a little bit of rubbing your stomach and patting your head. Because if you press the wrong one, you'll spin out pretty badly. And I'm not good to lap anybody. But you can see on the map that I was getting close to lapping somebody. Another half lap and I'd have had him. But look where second place is versus the rest of the pack. So you can see, I won that race by roughly 23 seconds. So we're going to jump ahead to the end of this particular tournament. It's three races. All right, so that's the end of that of the Kagoshi tournament. You can see that in this race, I soundly destroyed them. Congratulations! I would guess on average I was 22 seconds faster. You've received a gold emblem. You are the true champion. And then you get to watch the staff credits. I do like that the credits are actually showing my races, as evidenced by the fact there is nobody around. Also, these credits are incredibly slow. So we're going to skip them. Now let me show you what the, sec the next step up is. You would expect it to be more difficult, and it delivers. My first pass at recording a video of this, I actually was not able to complete the Asogi. So, you have to get 4th place or above every time. And you have five con or 3 continues. And it's 5 races. And it's hard. So I can pick which one I want to start with. I'm actually going to go back to Sunset Highway, which is the first track we did in the Kagosha. You're going to notice a marked improvement in the quality of our opponents. I'm going to go with Ren Goku because I don't know. Things are about to get really ugly. Everybody shoots way past me at the very beginning. How? I don't know. But I found that. So the only way I was able to actually even place in this... Only the second step up a difficulty is aggressive use of boosting and a better understanding of how to use the side the side thrusters. So the energy thing I was talking about just now, that was it. But so this is the problem with this one, is that your craft apparently weighs nothing, and their craft weighs billions of pounds. They're, apparently everybody else's tube slider is made of black holes. Because you're essentially just blasted away the second you touch anything. Whereas they seem to have infinite weight and are not bounced at all. And once you spin out, or once you're knocked out of your your path, you essentially lose all your speed. And whereas their velocity appears to be unlimited, and their acceleration... You know, on a rocket launch, yours is kind of slow. So I really need to pad my, my score on this race because this is one that I actually know the track really well. This is actually probably my best showing, but you'll notice first and second place are monstrously far ahead. 
And this guy, whose craft, I believe, has lower top speed than me, is constantly passing me. Oh, wow. One or second place screwed up, and I took him. That won't last long. So I do need to maintain the usage of my boosts, because I don't want to just be wasting them by not having any capacity left in my pips to, to stock any more energy. Oh, seriously? Oh, come on! I would assume somebody tapped me and that was it. But who knows? Oh my god, first... Never mind. Again, the AI here is rubber banding so hard that I don't even have words for it. So that energy thing I keep trying to describe, I'm going to steal his energy. So you can see I'm stealing it now. Um... When you're being stolen from, you can actually activate your boost and counter the theft. Alright, I'm near the end of the race. This might be my first win ever in this, this tournament. I'm expecting some rubber banding to kick in real soon. Ho! Oh, ho! Oh, ho! Oh, I did it! This is un unimaginably rewarding. Usually when you're in first place with about half a lap to go, the whole racetrack conspires to kill you. But you'll notice, I did not win that race by 37 seconds or something absurd like that. Also being very careful to hit next because the game really wants you to watch your replay. Factory plate or big tree? I know factory plate better. Let's see if I can pad my score a bit and get the big tree unscathed and not having to use any of my continues. Because I don't know the other two tracks very well. I've only done them once each. Again, watch everybody just shoot past me. They really didn't. Um, maybe it's just being in the lead leadoff position is where it's at. So the other downside of being on like the top is that you have the tendency to fall. And everybody's passing me. And I have a pretty good top speed and everybody's passing me. I'm a four pip top speed out of five. Oh. So now I'm in trouble. If I, if I don't finish better than fourth, I have to redo the race. Which is really frustrating. So I stole his energy that time. Because I, I pressed the button right as that circle was forming. Which essentially means I got that boost for free. Come on! I boosted four times and I didn't pass them. That. So he tapped me and I completely spun out. He just continued on his merry way. And there's nothing you can really do about it. I mean, the game is going to get you when it gets you. I still need to make up a whole... At least one space. All right. Basically, I can't afford to lose a spot. My goal should be to gain one more spot and just to give myself some padding for when the game inevitably tries to screw me at the very end of the race. I didn't spin out that time. That was a nice change. I've bit it on that corner three times this race. Or two times this race. Alright, third place. I'll take it. I'll take third place. I get to continue on. But you can see I'm having to fight so much harder. Just to accomplish anything. I could have taken a nap in the previous cup. And the, just the sheer lack of scaling is really frustrating.
So we're going to run the Imitation Jungle because we've not seen this course before. And then I'm going to actually quit this one and jump to the third Grand Prix, which I've not even attempted before. Just to maybe give you guys something to laugh at. And then we'll probably call it. So I'm pretty proud of myself so far on this one. This is... That's probably my best start to Imitation Jungle. I've only run it a couple times. There's a part of Imitation Jungle coming up that's actually really hard to run. And I need to know where it is so I can make adjustments to my path accordingly. So I, I like this this design though. It kind of reminds me of a roller coaster or a water slide. You know, one of those really crazy ones. Here it is. Oh, I missed it. So right there, what I needed to do is get up on the top and get that red that red boost because that would have just shot me through that tight tube right there at such a high rate of speed. I wouldn't have really had to have steered. So I'm going to start trying to burn some of these boosts just to get some gap here for when the game inevitably, inevitably allows second place to make a run. There it is. And again, at no point was there any real indicator that he was catching me. He just sort of does. And now he's just gone. The game decided that I'm not allowed to be in front of him anymore, and it has acted accordingly. Oh, I just missed it again! Oh, no, you don't! I had enough of your garbage. Damn it! There's no defense against that either, and you can't inflict it on them. That's what's frustrating. If I could hit them and do the same thing... That would be one thing, but I really can't. And because top speed doesn't really seem to factor into your opposition's vehicles, there is something about that that's just really unfair. Your only real defense from getting lapped or getting passed is the counter boost, which I used just there. Pressing it right when his thing was about to engage. But now, I have no idea how far ahead first place is. Probably pretty far. First and second. And the music seems to have stopped. Where did the music go? Got it that time. Oh. Third place. All right, we're going to jump ahead to the the third Grand Prix. I assume I'm about to be annihilated. So I actually went and finished a Sogi, and despite my promising start, still only got third place. Some pretty high-level high cheating by the game there late in it. But now I'm worried. The Nayuda, I've never even attempted. I thought Asogi is impossible to get gold on. I assume Nayuda is the game is literally going to get out of the Wii, smack the controller out of my hands, and tell me what to do with it. I'd like to see some of the new courses. Because there's two new courses, but Suspension Bridge and Rainbow Ocean. But I'm guessing they're probably gonna be locked at the end. Oh, I have to rerun one of these courses to get to the next one. This is probably going to go badly. 
given the difficulty jump between the first Grand Prix and the second, I suspect the difficulty jump here is going to be astronomical. Let's go with Bobaro. All this music sounds the same anyway. Oh my god! Like, nobody got left at the line. It's like, it's, it's like if everybody was that person who got second place to me in this race in the last playthrough. Like, everybody has to be perfect. So my goal, my goal should just be fourth place. Like, anything beyond that is roses. You can unlock other racers if you beat this mode. No, I say beat. That means first place. I would assume no one has ever unlocked other racers in this game. I never expected to even sniff first place. I'm feeling pretty good right now. That's usually when the game gets you. And there is the game getting me. The boost gauge doesn't seem to fill up as quickly either. Maybe that's just my perception. It definitely doesn't fill up as fast. It definitely does not fill up as quickly. Probably because they want you to try to use the sub barrier theft more aggressively and the thing about the boost gauge is when it fills up at the speed it was filling up especially during the first Grand Prix when you're way ahead it's just essentially it's a win button because you can just keep jamming your boost it only really seems to fill up when you're right on top of somebody So that means, oh, those pickup boosts are way more important if the boost meter isn't filling up. And since it's not, second. All right, I'll take second. I didn't realize it was the third lap. I would have tried for, for first a little harder. All right, Eda 10, like Eda 10 and Ben 10. Hey, it's showing Nikki crossovers. I'm glad he's found a new profession besides being a muscle man in chains shooting lasers. Excuse me, being a god shooting lasers at a muscle man in chains. My mistake. I don't need to create new head cannon for Shoaniki. It's got plenty on its own. So I still can't pick one of the new races. I still have to go through these. I hope it doesn't make me do all of the old races before I get to see the new ones. That would be shitty. How about Ren... Kamui? Kamui? Maybe Kamui would be good. I'm trying to remember what, what this track is. The thing is, the backgrounds are kind of interesting, but unlike F-Zero GX, where you see that stuff because it's part of the track, you know, like the big the big advertising signs on Big Blue. Like, the track is three-dimensional. In this, because the track is... I mean, it is literally three-dimensional, but because you're inside the tube, so much of your eye, so much of what you're seeing is just the tube. All that stuff in the background is kind of lost. So, for example, on Big Tree, yeah, you can see that you're in a tree, but most of the time you're just looking at, these, at this metal grid work that you're riding on. Right now, I'm tunnel visioning, tunnel visioning, pun not intended, on the person who's in front of me. Well, I'm not now because I'm in the first place, but now I am. So everything in the background is lost to me.
Oh. And this is the problem where getting hit costs all your speed, because now there's no boost development. Your boosts come up so slowly that I'm still trying to get back up to speed from when I got hit a good 10 seconds ago. And the only way to really do it is burn my boosts, which are really super useful in this particular mode because they don't seem to be regenerating as quickly as they did before. Oh. So I burned a boost and I'm only halfway up back to my full speed. I've got to get fourth place. Above all else, I must get fourth place. This track is reversed, isn't it? I was trying to figure out why it doesn't look familiar, and I think it's because it's reversed. I did see some of the tracks had R's on them. I wonder if this is one of... I didn't notice this one being reversed, though, but maybe I just missed it. The game does not want me to have fourth place. Like, it's actively pursuing a campaign of putting me in fifth place. Come on! He just mysteriously cannons his way in front of me. I guess we're not going to get to see the next tracks, because I can't be bothered. This is... Yeah, it is reversed. This game sucks. I was say, I mean, like, the mechanics... The mechanics work okay. The rubber banding is awful. Rubber banding in racing is terrible. I understand why you do it, but it's implemented so poorly here. And so transparently so utterly transparently where you're being just blasted by by tr cars that have lower top speeds than yours while you're boosting it's such a blatant effort to deprive you of victory that it's it's really infuriating the the difficulty scaling is a joke and there's just not any variety like no matter how much variety they put in the background of these stages, how much they dress them up, ultimately all you're seeing is the tubes. The, ca the cars are all stupid, and it just doesn't feel tight enough. Like, you could pull this off, but they didn't. Also, this came out just before F-Zero GX for some reason. From a partially owned Nintendo developer who should have known that F-Zero GX was coming and said, Hey guys, maybe don't do this game. But they didn't. So, I don't know. Like, there, Something here could work. Some of this game works, just not enough of it. So that's where we're at. That's Tube Slider. Thanks for watching, everybody. You can hear more about Tube Slider. I mean, probably not. I'm probably not going to talk that much about it. But you can hear more about other games I'm going to talk about this week. Wario World. We'll talk more about LBX. Little Battler Experience. And whatever the rest of the guys have on Radio Free Nintendo episode 443, which should be out on s the first Sunday in September. I don't know what day that is. The 6th? Maybe it's the 6th. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.